<laughs> All right, we're recording again, part two, part two of our of our epic <laughs> Sunday. Right. It was discussion. so epic. We yes. had to do it twice. So Ryan, when 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 the when the internet decided to end our recording, uh, you're talking about uh, different usages of of speed workouts. Now, now, how about with running for you? Like when you're programming, or when Tony's programming, you know, you're you're like say you have a marathon coming up. Like how much speed work are you doing for that marathon? The marathon, I didn't do a lot. When I was doing the marathon block training, there wasn't a lot of speed work. It was all pretty much tempo. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. If you listen to the last Ask the Coaches Endurance Planet podcast, uh, Lucho's description of tempo is, is marathon race pace. Hmm. So tempo is not super fast. It's, right. it's a good, comfortable, kind of I can hold this for two-ish hours pace. Uh, there was a little bit of threshold pace which would be, you know, slightly above that, maybe half marathon pace, but that was pretty much it. Hmm. But with the half marathon and 70.3 and like Olympic distance 5k stuff, it's, there's, there's some mile repeats and yeah. 400s and 800s and stuff like that. Nothing like what Lucho does. No crazy right. by 300 all outs and yeah. throw up on the track. <laughs> yeah. But, I I was watching. Well, I told you I watched that video from uh, from Ragnar, and first I thought that you were that 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 you were him, because your form was nice. looking pretty dialed in. And, and then, I, up then I saw his form in a later video, and like you can just tell, like he just moves just so well. Like yeah. like nothing like. And I think it's interesting. Like I feel like some people, like I think like if I ever look, look like half that good in my running, it'll be because like I really like worked on like form and like posture and all these things. I have a, a theory that I don't think is even my theory that I stole from someone, but I'm calling it my theory. We're like, cause he went through, like he was like a high school runner, I think Lucho and like ran in college for a minute uh, and then decided that wasn't for him. But um, the friends that I know or the people that I know just now who ran in high school or say pros who ran high school and then college, I think often the tendency is to think, Oh, well they're a good runner because they went to like a high school or college track program. But I think actually it's the opposite. Like the only reason they were able to even survive that is because they just happen to have these good genetics and can move well. Um, you know, I think some people just move better than others uh, on, a, on like an intrinsic level. Or maybe it is just like running faster, younger, develops that, that form. Like you can't really run a, a fast 5K with terrible form. Like eventually you're, you're going to get weeded yeah. out. I don't know about uh, yeah. that. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he just moves. Like, I mean, I even I watched the uh, Boston Marathon documentary today for like probably the thirtieth time. I had it on while I was doing my, my uh, spinal mobility work earlier in the day, and like, there's all these shots of like Kenyans running and Shalane Flanagan training up in Flagstaff, and you're just like watching them move. You're like, oh, okay. It's like seeing LeBron James like dunk from the hat, like the foul line. You're like, oh yeah, okay. It's just a different. Like, I try to think of them as like different species, different like sport altogether like fast professional running and then like you know every so often i get a glimpse in a window and i'm like all right that doesn't look terrible because i'm running past it but yeah good form man what a uh, what a joy to watch um <laughs> so, good. so nate how are you planning on approaching because we're, we're as you mentioned before we're running the same race yeah um, maybe same races depending if we definitely pull the trigger on the santa barbara half uh, as a tune-up race um, how are you planning on approaching your, your marathon training or how have you approached it in the past? How might you change it? Yeah, I think right now I'm just going to focus a little bit on math, just get those miles back in. I want to get up similar to you. So probably close to seven hours in a week and just, um, just on Mondays, I'll usually go out for about an hour and mm -hmm. then I know I don't really necessarily need speed work, but I've been enjoying that on Tuesdays. I meet up with a group. It's the one time a week I'll nice. meet up with people and then I'll just do some I'd like tempo stuff or just 10 K five K pace. Just mm -hmm. we, there's actually a coach that shows up there and tells us what to do. He's like yeah. a local coach from one of the community colleges. So it's pretty fun. So there's a, a tight team of people that meets up. We just go run, we do that. And then, and then usually Wednesdays, similar thing i'll i'll recover go you know usually below math and just mm. try to take it easy and then uh, just kind of build up some of that mileage uh, i also will incorporate a lot of um, strength work kettlebell stuff 
Yeah. Uh, and make sure, <laughs> make sure I'm doing that and not just only running. I signed up for Zwift, but I don't have a bike or anything. So that's fine. <laughs> I have the app, so I'm good to go. <laughs> but you can borrow my bike. You yeah, can, exactly. You can run on Zwift. Yeah, my. <laughs> can I? Yep. Absolutely. I'm going to try it after this. <laughs> treadmill. Kind of, oh, look at that. Yeah. It just stays yes. in the middle of my small apartment at all times. So good. But one thing I learned from Tawny when I, I probably, I think it was two years ago, I was working with Tawny getting ready for the Chicago marathon and just time on my feet. So even mm. if, and I think this has really helped with not getting injured, but even on a day, instead of having a full day off, just, you know, take a day and walk for an hour or just go yeah. out and hike a little bit. So I've really enjoyed getting out in nature more. Uh, mm. Being in California, it's amazing because we do have flatland, but we also can go to the mountains. And so I love going to Mount Baldy and hiking up there. Uh, yeah, if I want to push myself, lot, I'll run right? a little bit. Yeah, I, I love it. It's, you, it's you so did, fun. Did you, and were you like training for Mount Baldy? Like you did like a bunch of like hikes before, or was that Whitney you did? Like, I was, I did Mount Whitney in right. it last, what was it? It was July, August. I told yeah, you. something like but that. You were training summer. on Baldy, right? For that, yeah, I was training, yeah. doing Baldy. I did it a couple times, a few weekends in a row. Threw a heavy pack on and and was yeah. doing that. So, so yeah, so I love to just on the weekends either do a long run or just get out and do a long hike. Just get time mm. on my feet. Yeah, uh, which helps. And so, so yeah, that's. I I just like to have fun with it. I don't overcomplicate it too much, yeah. but yeah. Um, but if I find that I'm plateauing or, you know, I, I do want to get back into rest and test, which is basically doing a math test uh, once a month and seeing where I'm at, seeing if I'm progressing. Uh, right. I haven't done that in a while, to be honest. So I think <laughs> yeah, we did one together. To yeah, we did one. It was UCLA. That was fun. So, so I think I'll do that again just a little bit just to see where I'm at. But kind of like Frank was saying, use it as a tool and not stress over it. Like, ah, always looking at my watch. I yeah. like to just go out and see where I'm at, but then just listen to my body and just enjoy it. And so, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see as the yeah. time goes. Well, I'm definitely getting like a sense from the three of you guys who are like pretty resilient and like, you know, like Nate just jumped into the LA marathon a few weeks ago and like just <laughs> ran a marathon. Like oh, that's that fun. Where it was fine. And, like, <laughs> back there, like, a week or two later. Um, like, I think it's really interesting. Like, I, I think I occasionally tend to look at math, like, you know, I listen to him on the podcasts and I, I'll like, I have his books and I'll like, you get it like in your head, like, you know, and, and Brad Kern's on primal endurance and like, yeah. don't go above math, like don't go above your math number. And so when I'm not running, yeah. I'll look at, you know, they have that like time in zone metric on the Garmin. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, I was above math for like eight minutes on my hour long run. Like I'm going to die. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, probably not. Like you're probably not going to literally die. But in my head, I get really worried about it. So I think, I could probably take a lesson from you guys or like, or, you know, you Nate, like going to track club. Like I used to do a track club here and like ran some really good times when I was doing it. Um, yeah. And I think like, rather than going like, Oh, I, I couldn't cause it's not math. Like it's probably a little more loosey goosey. Uh, sure. You know, and also in Ryan is an interesting case too, because Ryan, like you had your, um, your, uh, your, your metabolic testing done and like you were actually like above your math number. So you, your math, like quote unquote range isn't, you know, 180 it's, minus three. It's, it's not true math. My true math is about 10 beats below what I run at. Right. Which is, and, and so like, but you, but your I guess like your crossover is what technically like probably like 158 or something. Uh, the last I tested, it was in the one sixties. Wow. That's, that's crazy. It's great. Yeah. And then what was your, like, you know, so your optimal fat utilization number, roughly, do you recall? Like, what do you, uh, what do you do for math? I don't remember. I my all I remember is zone, it was kind of a weird test this last time. So zone one didn't, I didn't get a proper warm up. I don't, some, like the treadmill kept breaking and it was weird. <laughs> zone one was kind of funky. And then I burned more in zone two and zone three than I did in zone one. Hmm. It was weird. I'm probably not true. Zone four, I was still burning fat. And then just barely into zone five, I was burning a little bit of fat, but my wow. crossover point had already hit. That's great. So all the way at like max effort, I was burning a little bit of fat still. Right. But your like the pace that you use for quote unquote math, like it, it's 10 beats above what your like, what your yeah. true math number would yeah. show you. So it's kind yeah. of the thing whenever like Brad Kearns talks about like, 
you know, like, yeah, you could have, or even math time, like, well, you could have testing done, but it's better to, like, stay at, like, this math number. Like, for you, that would put you at a disadvantage. And one, yes. I guess, because, you know, or I guess you could maybe, like, like, do you think if you were just doing true math, say, could you handle even more volume? Yeah, uh, now, so, so it's kind of a strange, I was doing true math and I wasn't seeing very, very much uh, progress in it. And hmm. I think it exposed, well, that and Ironman St. George, after the 70.3 St. George a couple years ago exposed something hmm. that most likely had been going on for about a year. Uh, I, I went to race morning and I just, I didn't sleep well and was feeling terrible and was throwing up in the bathroom the night of, and I went to the hospital instead of the, instead of the race start and I had pneumonia. So oh, wow. I had pneumonia for a long time and that kind of exposed the, a few things, but we noticed that I wasn't getting any better at true math. And then that happened. I kind of, got my diet in order and got recovered. And then we bumped my math up 10 beats after mm. the metabolic test. And that's when I started seeing a lot of results. Mm. And then now uh, my true math or my math pace is pretty fast. So I have been bumping back down to true math on a lot of runs. Oh, so wow. Get the volume without that intensity. <laughs> that's what I call a high class problem whenever you're yeah your math pace is too fast for you to run. You're like, oh, um, I yeah. can't even do math anymore. I'm so fast. <laughs> what, what, is your, um, what is your math pace right now? Uh, it's the last test I did, it was about a 740. Wow, uh, great. It feels like it's probably a little bit faster now, like a 730. That's awesome. Depends and, on the uh, temperature. <laughs> how long did it take you to get down to, say, 740, 730, like where you're at now? I think I've been training math for three years. Two, gotcha. two years for sure, maybe three, with so, a break of pneumonia in there. <laughs> so what was like, say, like your, like your last three months of math tests, like roughly? Uh, so I haven't done a, tr a math test since last. Right, I guess it's true, yeah. But, or your you know, math-ish pace, I mean, over the past three months. The last few, few months, it's just been right, hovering right in that 730, 740. Hmm. Okay. So, so I'm wondering, <laughs> I'm asking very selfishly because – my, you know, the race that Nate and I are running, you know, is in 18 weeks. And right now I'd say I'm probably like, eh, like 930 right now is my guess. Um, yeah. So ideally, as we've talked about in our direct message, uh, Facebook chat, like ideally I'd be down to like, I would say seven, you know, if the goal is 710, 707 pace, something like that, I think for a 306 ish. Right. Uh, I'd have to get down to like a, say seven like around 740 is probably like the the, the slowest i could be and, <laughs> and like and still qualify because like you figure like you know plus you had a race pace you're a little faster yep. on the day it's a downhill course but yeah six 18 weeks doesn't seem like an abundance of time to get down from a 930 <laughs> to a 740 necessarily yeah i always think that like maybe frank has the same thought with a coach is you just kind of have to trust the plan because right. I, I never feel like I'm going to make the speeds I want to make for race day, but then magically a few weeks before race day, things just fall into place and hmm. you feel good. But leading up to it, you're, it's like, oh, I've only got two months. I don't know if this is going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm but, wondering if maybe like this is the argument like for interesting, you know, not a lot of speed work, but like a little speed work, like, you know, I think doing. it depends on the person. I respond yeah. to speed work really well, or I did, I still do. So that we've just experimented, done that, did the n equals one tests, and for me, right. a little bit of speed work keeps me mentally sane and keeps me fast, I guess. Yeah. But it's it's not true for everybody. So. Right. Right. So yeah. what are those what are those speed tests that you would do for? Um, and guys, by the way, like anyone just jump in here. I, I'm not like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm waiting for you to call on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Have to way. raise my hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, Nathan. No, no. yeah, just, just jump yes. in. Just, just jump in. Um, I'll, I'll just keep in interrogating Ryan about how how to become fast. Um, but so you know, Frank's faster than I am. So <laughs> yeah, so Frank, let's let's have you jump in then. Yeah, um, you're fast. Like, Talk. <laughs> are, are you safe for like your longer distance things? You have never done like a pure 
marathon, right? An open marathon? No. So before we get to that, though, I have a theory because it was in the very beginning, you were talking about like, man, if I had known math at 24. So I read about it and I knew about it when I was like 23, but Uh, I never at any point actually like my personality, I've been self-coached up until past September when I first started working with Lucio and kind of like Ryan just said, it's that whole just trust in the system and it's been awesome like everything i've just been like all right i trust this so i'm gonna do this but one thing i noticed and of course good communication is great because it's like hey this hurts or i'm not feeling this then it's like you know coach moves it around but it's like um i noticed a massive jump in my math pace to be like much faster starting to work with lucho and we had been doing speed stuff like um, right off the bat. Actually, we did true speed stuff within the first month. Um, mm-hmm. One of my first sessions I did with him, I did, uh, I think, like, four or six by 100 on the track. <laughs> uh-huh. So, like, wow. fast, fast. it's yeah, not true. anything we've touched on since, but, you know, off-season stuff like that, just yeah. do that. But, like, with the tempo and the threshold, mm-hmm. we, did, we did a lot of threshold stuff for half marathon. Um, I've noticed just going out and another big thing that's probably a confounder is I've finally like gotten a hold on fueling consistently just mm-hmm. throughout the day. Cause I'd always just like my appetite would be killed. I'd chronically under eat throughout the day. Mm-hmm. So like it would be hit or miss whether or not I'd have a good session. And I think right. that's part of it, but like just starting that, even with like a lot of the tempo stuff, the threshold stuff, some of the faster stuff, it's like my math jumped down to like, I'm probably right where Ryan's at now, like anywhere between, because I haven't done a specific math test like on the track, but just, you know, if you have your watch and you have your heart rate monitor, yeah. and your GPS, it's like any math run. Every day is a math test. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got this route that's like not even like half a degree downhill, but uh-huh. like some days I'm cruising at like 715 and it's like wow. hard to get to math and it's still slightly downhill. And that's a huge thing. That's it great. kicks up to like 1% uphill and I'm like, all right, I'm going 740 right now. Right. But it's just like, I've noticed that change and like having that energy and the rest and stuff. It's just, hmm. well, it's just like, just listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. I've got it on the schedule. Might yeah. as well do it. Yeah. Um, and like my, my, um, like why I didn't do strict math before is most of my runs, I wouldn't even wear a watch. It's just like, I just want to go out and run or whatever. Right. And I'm sure days would be well below math. Some of them will be above, but I never really like now I wish I kind of looked back and like, oh, I can have some data and I can see how this went because I didn't record anything or whatever. So it was just kind of like, well, it sucks because I can't go back and actually tell you what I did, but it worked because I'd like, it, I'd err on the side of not pushing too much. And that's probably why I'm, I've been so resilient because I never like, I didn't, I always like the training more than the racing. So it's not like, oh, I need to hit this time goal at this race. For me, it was just like, getting the most out of myself, but it wasn't as efficient. So I've liked it so far. Um, But I've just noticed like since having that, that specific speed stuff, like my math is just like plummeted to like way faster than it used to be. Yeah. But again, some examples of, of of, like speed work that you've done, say for the half marathon, you mentioned like tempo and all that, like, yeah, a lot of mile repeats, mile Um, repeats, okay. At what pace? 800s. Um, there was this one workout I remember we did mile repeats and then he had me do some cut downs to 800s and then some really fast 400s hmm. while I was tired. And it was just like wow. that, that jog home was just like, all right, yeah. it's like, I couldn't go faster than nine minute pace if I wanted to. <laughs> so what is like, then when you do those mile repeats, like what pace are you aiming for? Like as fast as you can do a mile? No. Um, let's see. I've got like 10 I, on my other screen. I've got my training log up. So let me look oh, nice. back into the past and see what we did so there would be some and there were like some of them were like i do a workout two days after and he's like you're not going to be rested for this that's okay (laughs) wow um let's see there was one where we did like thousand repeats he wanted me to do it around like 425 pace to 433 wow um wait you mean four minute and 35 second pace yeah uh for for a k not a mile yeah very different. So, like, was that like a six minute mile pace? Um, something Ish. like that. Oh, this one was a tough one. It was seven by a mile with only one minute of rest. Um, 6.15 to 6.25 pace. Wow. Um, so a lot of that stuff we were doing specifically on pace. So there was like a flat section of road that I did a lot of this on uh-huh. because doing it in the hills would have just been impossible to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the right um, 
So there was some of that. There were some ones that were faster, but with like two or three minutes rest in between. But I remember that one being, that one was rough um, in a good way. I kind of liked it. <laughs> it's fun to run fast. Like that's just one part of like math. Like I feel like when I do it, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like, you know, on a hot day, especially I'm like, I'd rather just like go to the track and like just burn out for like a half hour than like, you know, do a yeah. bunch of like 10K pace stuff. Then like, okay, I'm like 60 minutes, slog at math in the heat. I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know. Those mile repeats were like my least favorite ones because I remember like, I really like doing some faster stuff, but I also like the long tempo runs. So yeah. we did a few like long tempo runs where it built up to the point where I was doing like 10 miles at the end, like at tempo. And we used math plus five to 10 beats for tempo. Mm -hmm. So like, and that's what we kind of use that tool for because like I, I don't want to be like on a track doing a tempo run. It's like I go on a route and like no matter what the hills are, at least I can use that heart rate to figure out what my tempo is going to be. Right. Because because uh, you can't necessarily have like an exact pace for that. So like math plus five to ten would be my tempo range. Mm -hmm. So I do that for some of the tempo runs. And like threshold would be like um, if it was flat, we'd use like a pace. But it would also be it would be something like math from like plus ten to plus twenty or something like that. So we'd use those like tools like we'd use the, the math as that mm. to figure out the other zones for the um for like the tempo right. or the threshold or whatever hmm. so nate does, has, has any of this uh <laughs> changed uh how you're I, i'm going kind of like hmm as we approach our races sure. how, how are you uh <laughs> taking the uh because you will you have your, well, your your speed work on tuesdays yeah you... yeah so kind of similar to what frank was doing i mean we'll do some mile repeats or we'll do like just the past two weeks, we did six times 1K. Mm -hmm. and so, so I was running that and running it hard. But what's so interesting, I was going to ask all of you guys, do you notice your, your heart rate change in morning versus afternoon? I know mm -hmm. uh, one thing that really interests me was uh, a long time ago when I read that book uh, by um, Michael Bruce, The Power of When. Yeah. Like just talking about just how we're all wired different and how some of us are very type A morning, wake up, ready to go. Uh, for my entire life, I've been more a night person. I don't know if that's the musician in me or what, but <laughs> I will do these speed workouts and I'm looking down and I'm like, is my watch broken? Because I'll look down and I'm like at math, but I'm like running hard. And then I'll go do morning workouts when I'll wake up, have a cup of coffee and go run. And I'm trying to do math. And I'm like above math and I'm like, what the heck? I'm looking down. Like all I think about is what's Greg going to say, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's not true math, bro. Yeah, <laughs> the math yeah. police is going to look at Strava. <laughs> Have you so. had your, uh, your cortisol checked ever? Like your morning and evening cortisol? I'd be curious to know if there's a correlation there. You know what I have? Oh, well, I did that Dutch test, that yeah. hormone test. And so I'd have did to show you as like flipped. What's that? Was it like, was your cortisol like higher at night and like lower in the morning? I believe so. So that, that might make sense too. Like, yeah. like that, my mom actually just did the, the test recently and that was her case. And she's like, not a great sleeper. And it's like, oh, cause your cortisol is jacked at night and then like plummets in the morning when that should really be reversed. Um, sure. But also you mentioned like, you know, working on your, like being at your, you know, on your feet a lot. Um, like I, I look at, like I, since I got my, well, I've been like on this new job now for like six weeks maybe. And I've been doing like much more standing work desk there than, you know, cause here, you know, it's a different story here. Yeah. I'm like moving sure. around walking Louie and stuff, but like being on your feet all day really does like your legs are tired at the end of the day. Yeah. You're yeah, standing totally. around and like, I have a kettlebell in the office too. So like every hour I'll do some little like kettlebell -y things, but um, yeah, it seems like the time on feet. I like what you said before about time on your feet. Like and just like keeping that in mind, like, you know, cause I'll, I'll walk Louie, you know, on weekends, like three hours a day, probably, and plus walking at groceries and all that. Um, so I wonder how much all that helps too. But yeah, sorry. So, but with you then, so you're you're able better. What was your uh, Michael Bruce thing, rather? Your like, chronotype. <laughs> well, well, it's, what's interesting is it said I was a bear, which is like the common like middle of the day. But I feel like my entire life I've been a wolf. Ever since I got, I just started running in 2013. So I'm still, oh, really? the, yeah. So I hated running. I mean, I have a crazy running story, but I hated it. Absolutely hated it. Never ran growing up, always played music, did other things. And just on a whim, I ended up running. Well, actually I'll keep it short, but no, I'll no, tell no. you this. Go as long as you want. This is the, now we're in the free <laughs> recording. So we can keep, we can <laughs> all the time we need. 
Well, I worked at Apple for about 10 years. Uh-huh. And while I was there, there was a couple uh, that were big runners. Apple would always do different challenges. And so uh, they, they would have just different competitions between the stores just to keep everybody fit and healthy and, you know, keeping things going. And so uh, we have this running challenge and I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Great. I don't want to do this. But uh, this couple, they, they were going on an anniversary trip and they planned it at the exact same time that the Orange County half marathon was, but they had already bought the, their bibs a year before they were getting a good price on it. So they already bought it and they're like, Hey, do you want to run this? And I was like, absolutely not. Nobody's chasing me. Like nothing sounds exciting about this whatsoever. This is literally 2013. So not even that long ago. Wow. Yeah, it's not. And, but this other girl at work was like, Hey, I'll run it with you. I'm like, Ooh, okay. You know, <laughs> let's go run this. And so, yeah, yeah. so I started walking, running, walking, running. Like I grew up with asthma. Hmm. Uh, just never have enjoyed running whatsoever. And I started doing that and I would go around the block. I at the time lived in Huntington beach and there was about a two mile loop around my house. I was about three miles from the beach and it was flat, but I would go about a half mile, start wheezing, be like, this is lame, (laughs) but I just kept at it. And then I started listening to podcasts, started listening to health podcasts and running podcasts and just soaking up as much information as I could because I just wanted to get better at it because I was just struggling and just barely getting around the block. And uh, so I ended up doing a half marathon for my very first race ever and walk run with this girl. And, and I ended up enjoying it. The scenery was amazing. We just, we just took our time. And next thing I know, another friend from work was like, hey, the guy that I actually paced in LA not too long ago, he was like, hey, let's do the Pasadena half marathon. And I thought he was going to be crazy fast I'm like uh sure let's just do it (laughs) you know I already have done one let's do another one and I did that and we ended up finishing probably five seconds away from each other and I was like man I could I was a lot better than the last time I just did and so I was super curious like okay well what can I do and so I just started I got the runners high I was just running more and more races I did just in that year probably like five half marathons and so I mean this is probably from April all the way through December Hmm. just got super into it and and he was like you got to do a full marathon I'm like yeah right that sounds horrible (laughs) but you know I next thing I know I just signed up for it and I ended up doing it so I did uh, Santa Barbara full was my very first the uh, veterans day one November or the one that we're doing uh, the November one yeah. yeah so that was my first full I think I did like 416 mm-hmm. and then I signed up for LA which was just a couple months after that the next year in 2014 and I ran 338 and so <laughs> I'd like yeah. jumped a ton and then so that's when I was like okay what is this and so I started listening to endurance planet and was super into it and uh, ended up reaching out to Tawny. I thought she was in San Diego at the time Mm. because just talking about school and just different things. And so come to find out she literally was my neighbor (laughs) just down the street. And so, so we ended up working together for a while. And, and so we were able to do some uh, in-person coaching, which was great. And, and uh, it was super fun. So since 2013, I've done a marathon every single year since then. Mm. And so, so it's been a little bit of a, a, low journey of when when I started working with Tawny I remember listening to the podcast and I was like what is this math thing people speak of yeah you know (laughs) I have no (laughs) idea what this is and I remember doing my first test and I was like Tawny this is ridiculous I think I was like at 11 minute pace or something and I was (laughs) so frustrated but what I really did love about it is it taught me discipline not only in running but then I feel like and this is a big long story to the whole Michael Bruce thing (laughs) but my whole life I've always been this like night person which I you know I feel like I have I still am but I feel like the discipline of math really taught me to change a lot of my habits and I started really setting myself up the night before so that I had success in the morning Hmm. and so the running really got me into okay I want to wake up I want to be disciplined with this it gave me that that time in the morning with other aspects of my life as well not just running but uh, just really uh, stretched me more in the morning and being on time to things and I've always just slept in and just been lazy in the mornings and I feel like I've switched that a lot so that's a long answer to when I took the test it said I was a bear (laughs) which was kind of a typical you know just I don't remember all the different ones. You have yeah. bear, 
I think yeah. I'm a lion. Dolphin, lion, you and Tawny, yeah. <laughs> so, get, up and, get up and go for it. Exactly. So, so sometimes I just wonder, is it my habits that I've created that have, are giving me these results on these tests sometimes? But, but yeah, most of my life, I feel like I've been that, that wolf of just, hmm. just anything I do at night. That's why the night runs interest me. I've never done them, but... Yeah. Well, you have with Ragnar. I, well, I've done Ragnar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I love the middle of the night just because you're just going for it and enjoying that. So yeah, so, yeah. Huh. So. Well, actually, it makes me think of something else I wanted to ask you guys about. So like, and it kind of touches a little bit on something Frank said before too about like getting his dietary like his intake, you know, um, yep. on point. And Nate, you mentioned you know sort of like how like running helped, just like you already the night before, like thinking ahead. And it is kind of incredible, like what running does teach it. Oh, I want to run well tomorrow morning. So I'll go to bed early tonight and like, maybe I'll make sure to like fuel in the morning or fuel, you know, appropriately mm, exactly. the night before. So how do you guys, like, are there things that you guys all do and anyone just jump in on it? Um, like what are the routines and things that you've utilized and specifically related around like diet and structure that allow you to do it well? Like, so, you know, Ryan has credited, I think his diet a lot with his success um, and so, you know, in some ways, you know, the diet doesn't run the runs for you, but you know, <laughs> um, it totally you know, does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Cashew, <laughs> cashew butter does. Um, but like, so Ryan, you you live by yourself. I live by myself. Yes. Uh, Nate, you do too, right? Currently, I'm not. No, I, I did in the past, and then I was with some roommates. Gotcha. And then gotcha. I'm, I'm also in a house. Yeah. So. Gotcha. And then Frank, you're married, so you have yeah. you have a roommate slash wife. Yes. <laughs> um, so like I've noticed for, for me like I like just got I was under eating a lot too and then I still struggle with like make sure, making sure to get fully enough calories so maybe you guys just speak on that as a broad concept like the habits structures routines that you guys have that that allowed you to kind of you know do well with all this stuff and anyone jump right in if it fits in my mouth I will eat it that's mm. pretty much no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for me, I, d I have to do shakes, a lot of shakes. Hmm. The, I mean, de uh, one, I all make a shake every morning pretty much that's got a ton of fat and a ton of calories. And I, it's, I think, five cups. What's the four and a half cups? Whatever the blend tech is. It, I fill that thing up and then throughout the day I finish that. And then that's in addition to my normal meals. So what, what's in your shake? Uh, if you ever recall an old Ben Greenfield podcast and him yeah. talking about the <laughs> superhuman shake, I think he's what he called it. Uh huh. It's like a can of full fat coconut milk, uh, okay. protein powder, some cinnamon, some salt, uh, like kale, some almonds, some a couple of Brazil nuts, uh, banana, some fruit. Uh, and then sometimes I'll just throw in like uh, some like uh, chia seeds or something like that. So a lot of calories. And a lot oh, of fat. I do recall that smoothie actually. Now that you mentioned it, um, it sounds kind of similar to uh, if you ever seen like the Nourish Balance Thrive guys. Like Tommy Wood uh, has like a I'm trying to think what's his um, call. Like, the, like Tommy Wood's like nutrient dense like or nutrient delivery smoothie or something like that. Um, yeah, and it's got like yeah like four cups of Swiss chard and like it's all the things that you, you mentioned um, plus like frozen broccoli. And so you'll drink that over the course of the day. You'll have it like just like an, as like. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, it's typically my I, uh, shaker bottle is my breakfast and then I will have the rest of it at, with my dinner. Hmm. Cause that dinner's usually after lifting or a day of training or whatever. So yeah I'll, I'll do you make it pretty thick and eat it with a spoon real slow or do you drink it or no i used to do that like ben greenfield recommended yeah. but it just was it was kind of a pain so and i'm sure. super lazy so, <laughs> so i uh i put a little bit more i'll do the, the coconut milk and then i'll add either some water or like almond milk or something to it to, to make it a true shake and what's a typical diet? Because you you uh, you eat a, a vegan diet. So what's like a typical like day for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Um, so it, it seems like you you have a real like enjoyment of food. I, I feel like we're living at home and or living alone. Like often I'm just like, how fast can I get like something in my face? And it's always like 
healthy above a certain bar. But like, I met like, the vegan, when I go out to vegan restaurants, which is like, there's one every block in LA, which I go to, <laughs> I, I go to them pretty often. There's a couple of really great ones around here. Um, like it's always like wonderful, like flavors and like multiple ingredients. But then I'm like, if I were to make that at home, like I would have to like quit my job. I feel like just to, like cook all day. So what, what do you typically eat in a given day? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, it's just me, so I'm kind of lazy. So a lot of times I'll just make a, op- uh, like an open-faced sandwich, the super hipster uh-huh. avocado toast, but I'll put other things on it. But uh, a lot of times time? just sauteed vegetables, just a, just a huge pan of whatever vegetables sauteed in coconut butter. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, that's pretty standard. Some veggie burgers. I found a couple veggie burgers that are, relatively light on ingredients only like five or six ingredients and no processed anything so that's good but then occasionally i'll you know have some vegan mac and cheese or something mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> could have some junk food every now and again yeah and what do you do you look at carbohydrates like as like a generally try to like stay in some range or you just like eat the carbs no, and don't worry no i mean i i'm on a lower carb diet i would say I, tra- I trend towards more fatty foods, but I, I don't watch it. It's Right, right. Do you know, like, what lower – I guess, like, it's hard to say, like, low, like you know, like, low-carb, high-fat, because, like, if you go out and run 20 miles, like, and you and then you come home and have, like, over the course of the day, probably even, like, 300 grams of carbohydrate, it's still very low-carb. Yeah. Relative to – and if you throw in some, like, speed in that, like, you know, a fast finish, like, you're probably, like, almost too low-carb in one manner of thinking – um like right. Chris Kelly often tells me like aim for 150 grams a day like minimally and then like if you have to go above that like go for it but try not to like dip too far below um 150 uh yeah i'm too lazy to measure all that stuff i only well, <laughs> all i eat is like <laughs> japanese sweet potatoes so like Very i just good. i'll just throw them on my i have a little food scale and i'll throw them on that and i'm like just make sure i'm getting enough because i used to think like, oh yeah like a sweet potato's got it, like a little one's got to have like a thousand grams of carbohydrates. So I'll have like half one of those and it's like, no, Greg, like you need many more than like this little uh, sweet potato. Um, so you know, how about the rest of you guys? Like what, what are your kind of like routines and like towards food or, or just like the organizing your life around, you know, sort of kicking ass in your sport? Yeah. Um, for me, it's kind of weird. It's kind of come full circle in a way. My running story kind of is pretty similar to Nath, Nathan's because um, I didn't start running till right after college. I hated it. I did like a year or two of cross country in middle school, but just because my friends were doing it, but I was slow. I hated every step of it. I'm like, this is dumb. So like my, even like, like the only sport, if you could call it that, that I did in high school was marching band. So like I was like into music and everything and I just didn't run. I'd hang out with my friends outside and stuff. What was that? Are you saxophone? What was your instrument? Yeah, saxophone. Yep. Um, and, you know, but with food kind of growing up, everything was always so healthy. But the reason I started running is because right after college, I was like hanging out with friends and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I can order a large Domino's pizza and drink Mountain Dew with my friends and stay up until 5 a.m. watching oh, yeah. I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, and then I was like, oh, I put on quite a bit of weight and it's like, I kind of want to switch this over. Huh. So I did it kind of organically, but one day it's just like, go for a run. So I ran, made it like half a mile, walked a half mile home, but it was just like, I kind of just got into running from that. It was almost kind of like a sign, but not really. Like it's something I wanted to do. And like with food, it's just, I never like got really like, um, like granular with it. I'm just like, I know it's like, well, I'm not going to stay up till 3am and eat a large pizza. It's, you know, cut out a lot of the junk and like kind of start to get into that myself. And over the years, um, that's when I um, decided to, my friend gave me the idea to become a trainer because I was helping him get ready for a Spartan race. And I'd also just enrolled into the Institute for Integrative Nutrition for health coaching. Hmm. And that's when I found podcasts. Hmm. And that's when I found Endurance Planet and Ben Greenfield and everybody else. And that was like 2013. Um, and that's when I started to like, well, you're listening to a lot of people and, you know, it's great advice and the way it sounds so author- like authoritative, I started to experiment with stuff and, you know, go very low carb and actually like be very like analytical with a lot of this stuff. So it came from like a place of being just very, just listen to my body and like trying some stuff and it worked. Um, 
you know, for a while, but then I found myself overanalyzing so many things, getting myself into holes. Like I'd just be like completely dead on the couch for the rest of the day. And I'd have like awful training things and it would just be trying to like outthink stuff because I was listening to this and I'm like, hold on a second, <laughs> this isn't right. So like yeah. I just started, it's almost come full circle to where it's just kind of going off cravings, but it's not like, I'm not going to be like, well, once in a while I'll be like, all right, let's go get milkshakes. But it's just like, you know, after like a big training day, but it's just kind of like, um, it's like all like good food, but now it's instead of being like, oh no, I can't have this because I won't be as fat burning or right. whatever. It's, I don't yeah. count anything anymore. Like I'll have lots of carbs. Like in the morning, I usually have good piece of toast, mostly sourdough, yeah. you know, um, it's delicious. Um, you know, I'll put like quite a bit now. It used to be just like some like butter and stuff or whatever, but now it would be like a good amount of like good peanut butter. And I've got some like blueberry preserves, some like good quality blueberry preserves and that's good with toast. But, like after a session, I'll make like a four egg omelet with spinach and cheddar cheese. Hmm. And, um, lunch is usually if I'm like busy, I'll just like have some like leftovers, but I mostly do the cooking in the house. Um, Kelsey really likes my cooking and she enables me to train as much as I do. So like, I like doing a lot of this stuff. So dinner will be like on some of like the lazy days, I'll just throw a few cups of rice in the rice cooker, um, cook up some vegetables, get some like meat, good meat in there. Um, and just kind of like spice it up that way. Um, she really likes, she really likes my stuffed shells and my meat sauces, some like Italian stuff. Um, uh, pulled pork's usually kind of like a staple. Like mm. I could just throw that in the slow cooker and I can like make burritos with it. Nice. But it's mostly just like, I don't shy away from carbs or any macronutrient, but it's all like for the most part quality stuff. But I'll still like, I'll still have some like ice cream at night, but it's not like, I don't know, like bubble gum flavored or whatever. It's like five ingredient stuff for the most part. And it's like, so I'll enjoy it. So it's not like, it's pretty moderate with like the approach to things but I could be consistent with it and I'm eating enough and I feel healthy and all that. So just making sure that I'm eating enough earlier in the day. So I'll make sure to like have like stuff around specifically carbs, especially because most days end up being doubles with triathlon. So it's like, I need to make sure that I'm not completely depleted for, um, you know, my second session or else I'm just going to feel awful. I won't be able to get anything done and I'm just going to just, feel like crap for the rest of the night so mm. that was just kind of the big thing because when I was like really analyzing stuff it's like I would have scrambled eggs in the morning but it wouldn't be till after I ran and all I'd have was black coffee and maybe some dark chocolate and Tani would always like give me crap for that but I'm like it worked but then like lunch would be like well I don't want to have like I want to make sure that I'll have carbs like later at night and I was like okay. overanalyzing stuff so it would either yeah. be like a nice sardine salad or whatever and it's just like I don't know. It would, it would work until it didn't. And then it really didn't. <laughs> so I just had to kind of like make sure that I was eating enough earlier on in the day and not just be like, well, theoretically I'll get X benefit from this, but if I can't even like get my bike over 12 miles an hour, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I look at like one thing that I've noticed a lot is like when I take, I, I love you can, um, yeah. it's a little pricey. It's like I think $60 for like, a 30 serving tub so it's kind of like it's on the upper end of like what i consider mm -hmm. reasonable and i'm pretty unreasonable so like if i'm kind of <laughs> like oh this is a lot hey um, you would pay like a hundred if it said boston on it if it was yeah if it was like yeah. a boston like clam chowder limited <laughs> edition you can yeah i'd pay a thousand dollars for it no question <laughs> Uh, run a lot faster too i would really you know, all that clam chowder <laughs> flavor is really what gets you going but <laughs> it's interesting like i've noticed like the runs where i don't take you can in the morning so i'm like yeah i had car i had a big carby dinner last night like yeah i'm just and, like my I used, you just feel crappy you just don't feel good like mm -hmm. I, and i think um i don't know like, i listen to like you know a lot of like the fat adapted runners and stuff and i, I certainly admire it but it's it's there's like the sports side of it where like, okay, you can see how this is all helpful and fasted runs are great. But then like, there's another side of it where you almost like I certainly have, and I think you kind of alluded to it before, like you almost put like a moral weight on these things. Like, well, like, you know, if I could like do a fasted two hour run, I'm a better person. Like I'm going to get into heaven, you know, like versus, <laughs> yeah. versus now yeah. I'm like, and like, it's a weird thing. Like, we listen to all these podcasts and like, you know, whether it's like primal endurance or, or even endurance planet, like in the early days, 
talking about low carb, high fat, like you can get almost like carb phobic and you're like, yeah. oh, I'm going to get diabetes if I have like, if I even look at a blueberry, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so it's cool to hear you say that, like that you're more like intuitive about it. And I guess like intuition initially requires maybe like, you know, say with, with math running, like having your watch right. on and looking, oh, this number feels like this. But then over right. time- It's a it's tool, hard. but not a dictator. Right. It's yeah, like, yeah, you have to get to that point. Like you got to experiment with stuff. Yeah. Until it's until so you can really figure that out. Like and even like well, Lucho said that before too, but it's something I believe. It's like your body's smarter than you listen to it. Right. Yeah, Lucho is the best. Like his his approach to life and just like sport and everything is like so. Like I guarantee you, he's not standing in front of like an infrared light at night, <laughs> like I am. No. Or like you know whatever. Like someone's got you. Yeah. So, <laughs> Nate, so, so, so yes. Nate, now with you then, so like, um, like what, what are your kind of, uh, cause I think we've all had similar enough experiences, like maybe under sure. times or like having to tweak yep. things. Where, where are you at and where were you? Like, what are some stuff yeah. you've had, had? I feel like I'm similar for sure. I remember before I started running, I just ate total crap, standard American diet, just wasn't even into health, didn't know much at all. And then when I started running, I started listening to podcasts a lot and then started working with Tani. I remember her even saying, oh, you got to meet this guy, Greg. He's, he's similar to you. You guys will have a lot in common. I'm like, who the heck is Greg? And I remember emailing you or something and you're like, yeah, man, I just have like some sardines. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah sardine and- run, bro. Sardine run. That sounds so lame, but I'll give it a try. Terrible. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so when I started running, I think we do live in this, this world of it depends and everybody is so different, but uh, I do try to listen to my body and change up what I eat based on the day. So if I'm training harder, that might change, you know, if it's a day where I'm, I'm able just to, you know, relax a bit more, but, but anyways, so when I started running, I really got into uh, low carb, high fat. I was listening to Ben Greenfield every day, you know, Vinnie Tortorich and just, you know, no sugars, no grains. Um, what's interesting though. And so I got really into that. I mean, I was doing like 50 grams of carbs a day, oh, you know, hundred wow. grams, you know, Were you and I was running ketones? a ton. I mean, yeah, I got like the ketone deal that you blow in and it would just oh, wow. tell you tonics where you just plug it in and it will tell you where your ketone levels are at. What so were you super at? into it. What's that? What were you at usually for ketones? Oh, it's been so long. Like 3.0, I think is like, it was, it was pretty like, low for good. a while, but but then I would just get out of it and, you know, just, you know, being fat adapted. I remember, you know, even talking with Tawny, I would just start snacking on, you know, those Epic bars and yeah. just going on hikes. And I feel like when I, even to this day, when I do things like that, I can go out and not really, you know, coconut, whatever it is, and just yeah. have almond butter, just something little. Yeah. And if I'm hiking or I'm just out in the wilderness, I feel like I do great without a lot of calories, but Me too. Yeah, but if when I'm running hard and I'm starting to train a bit more, I've definitely changed that a bit. So for me, usually the morning consists of eggs. I tend to do omelets a ton. And so before the run usually or like after your run? Uh, depending on the day, but usually before actually. Really? So yeah, so I don't do... I usually do about four to five eggs <laughs> pretty much every day. Okay. I just, I just love eggs, but... Um, but I'll usually do that. Uh, and then that could vary, you know, like Frank was saying, I mean, I'll throw cheese in there and spinach and whatever, just mix it up a little bit. Um, and then usually a coffee in the morning. Uh, enjoy that. For a while I was doing the whole bulletproof coffee and uh-huh, yeah. you know, just going out for a run after that. Oof, but. It's so hard to run with that. <laughs> like I have, I've almost had diarrhea so many times <laughs> doing bulletproof coffee. Like, wow, yeah. there is, a, this is a really bad idea. It's like anchor man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. Yep. So you'll yeah, do then, eggs before. Yeah. Eggs before. Usually, I mean, I, same as Ryan, I'm not doing it as much as I did in the past, but when I first started listening to Ben, I was doing just crazy shakes in the morning where I would just dump everything in there, like every superfood I could find, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, just yeah. like, yeah. I was like, what am I eating, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but I do that. Usually lunches are big salads, and so I just, I'll just throw as much as I can, you know, in a big old salad. That's pretty mm-hmm. common for me for lunch. Um, and then dinner is more of the, the carb heavy, 
um, not heavy, heavy, but you know, I'll just let it go a little bit more. Usually more of a stir fry or, you know, in the sense of just throwing tons of veggies. I love eating greens. And so I'll just throw a lot of different veggies in a pan, maybe mix it up with some meats or, you know, like you, I love those sweet potatoes. Uh, definitely enjoy that for sure. Uh, yeah. I've been doing a lot of bone broth. I enjoy bone, drinking bone broth. Sometimes I'll even get nice. up and drink that and then go mm. for a run. Nice. Uh, you know, depending on the effort, you know, that'll totally depend. So it's interesting. I got super into low carb, high fat. And then I remember going to Kenya. I was there and ran the Nairobi marathon and I had the honor of, of working with an elite marathoner over there. It was, that's a story in itself, but, yeah. but over there, you know, just talking uh, with them and I mean, they're eating tons of carbs, <laughs> you know, yeah. and just sweet potatoes, but it's just all natural, real food. And, and so you know, eating tubers and eating just all kinds of different things like that. And, you know, at first that totally just wrecked my stomach because I wasn't oh, used to it because I was really? so, so high fat. Huh. So, so it was just kind of a, it was, I think it was just a shock to the system at first, but, Interesting. but from coming back from there, I think my biggest struggle, and I think you were kind of similar in this is I just won't eat enough is I'll just go throughout the day and be like, Oh, like I'm eating healthy per se, but yeah. I'm like, okay what did I just eat? Like, I just need to eat more, you know, yeah. so, so I'll yeah. go through the day and, and not have enough, but, but I'll try to, you know, throw in little snacks like you just had earlier that, that bulletproof bar or whatever yeah. that was. And, you know, I'll just do little things like that when I can, you know, and just fill things in or I love olives. I love just little avocados. Can't go wrong with avocado. Can't go wrong. Just like Ryan, I do that. That's and Frank, I do that sourdough. Tony got me into sourdough. There's this great uh, place to get sourdough, a farmer's market down the street. Oh, nice. So usually on Fridays, I go and get sourdough, and then not every week, but every once in a while, do that, throw some avocado on there. So, so yeah, so that's nice. Pretty typical. Yeah. I was curious, Ryan, what was the, the toast that you use? So, so, so Nate and Frank are in uh, Team Sourdough. What's, what's the toast that you use? <laughs> sourdough as well. Oh, sourdough? And is it like a place that you get it at, like a local bakery or something? Or? Uh, I used to, there's a couple guys at work that used to make their own. Oh, and cool. they occasionally bring oh, me some. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you brought some to Ragnar last year, right? Yeah, yeah. He made, that was amazing. That was amazing. really good. Yeah, he, but then he stopped making it. So now I, there's a store I shop, uh, just a grocery store that has started carrying a, like a traditional sourdough local made company. So that's what I nice. get now. Great. So my friend starts making his amazing sourdough again. Yeah, no okay. That stuff was really good. It was like a big round loaf with like seeds and it was like all sprouted. And like, doesn't he grind his own flour too, you were saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he would. Yeah. He oh totally it out. It was. It was amazing. It was like the most bespoke product. <laughs> I remember, like, exactly. when I, like, I wasn't even running last year, and I remember going back to like Tony's or like her parents' house or uh, at one of the rest stops, and just like eating so much of that with like good Kerrygold butter. And yeah. I was like, well, technically, I'm on this team. I may as well <laughs> actually eat the same way. Better make some pants fall off. Um, yep. This might this might fall into the category of TMI, but speaking of carbs and stuff, I um. I'm going through Chris Kelly again to like fix some gut stuff. I have some like gut things going on again. So I've been like, I got three boxes of pills the other day in the mail, <laughs> like <laughs> a whole like gut protocol, um, which I think like all I, I was noticing, I'm like, am I getting fat? I don't think so. I was maybe hanging on to a little more body fat than I thought I should be, um, which is strange. But then I also was like, I, I would go and have like lunch or you know, or a weekend or, or you know, dinner and then walk my dog afterwards. And I look like, I noticed like in a mirror, like a, you know, a glass like storefront and I look like pregnant, like huge, like belly, like sticking out. And I was like, what, what's going on? So I emailed Brainers. Chris Kelly and I was like, I think like I have some, like, I don't think the, like whatever the gut thing was, I don't think we really fixed it. Cause like I sent a picture like before a meal and then after dinner and he's like, okay, yeah, that's not normal. You shouldn't look pregnant <laughs> as a man. <laughs> um, and so he was like, I mean, he sent me a, a, a stool test to do, to, you know, perform in a little vial. Um, and I was like, yeah, but in the meantime, like, we'll do the test, but like, I'll send you what I think you should be taking. Cause like, we don't need a test to tell us what we already know. Like, you clearly like, are eating food and then becoming very, 
belly belly rich um so i wonder if that'll like affect things too like if i could sorry my dog's now behind the i have my computer on a little like bolster Lou, what are you doing buddy you're going crazy <laughs> you're going crazy he's nuts right now <laughs> hey look oh this is chicken <laughs> oh chicken he's a nut you're crazy louie um he's like so uh, he knows that i'm talking to you guys and like i'm ignoring him and he's like trying to like show off right now come on play with me voices now he's like digging yeah. in the rug um so what, where so where are you what are you guys currently uh this may be our last topic before we all sign off because i know it's getting late for frank out there what are you guys currently excited about like either in your own training or concepts you're applying to your own health and wellness your life um or little tools or hacks or whatever what, what, what's, what's kind of getting you excited right now in in, in life and sport and health go frank <laughs> uh, well this is exciting um <laughs> no but for real it's like the whole like post ragnar like getting to see you guys and everything um is always a great way to like kick off the warm season <laughs> i guess um it would be cool to like get together in person more often than once a year if we can make yeah. that happen but like sport stuff i'm just excited to get like just there's a lot of unknown ahead because like you know, working with Lucho and everything, just seeing how fast I can get. Um, that's kind of what's grabbing me right now, but also just kind of like, I don't know, just planning ahead for like future like hikes around here and stuff. And I don't know, just like general optimism for a lot of things. Um, yeah, a big part of that for me now is just seeing like how far I can take this um, and taking it kind of like, as serious as a non-serious person can take it, like not taking it seriously to the detriment of other stuff, but being like, all right, this is priority. And, you know, still just having fun with it and making fun of myself the entire way. But yeah, like, that's just, that's the biggest thing I'm looking forward to. That's great. Yeah. It's well said too. Yeah. I feel like uh, it's cool. Like when you have a process that you really believe in, um, cause it allows you to like have these big goals, down the road or like just like oh wow i'm like excited about what might come but you're also really invested in like enjoying the actual like daily moments of that versus like no i'm only about the outcome and you know whatever that's really cool. yeah yeah it'll, it'll be fascinating to see uh as you work with lucho or like how far he can take you I, I mean you're you're you have a you know you already you're what 26 27 29 oh you're 29 now yeah oh, wow. that's crazy that's life, huh? you'll always, be young, you'll always <laughs> nice. be young frank in my mind um, yeah, people always say that, like, they, like, <laughs> talk to me, like, when they see me, they think I'm really young. Lucho thought I was in my 30s already. I don't know. It's it's all over the board. <laughs> so, but I'm um, still in my 20s. Okay. Well, I think you have you have some amazing races ahead of you because, like, sorry, Lou is being nuts. <laughs> yeah, no. you, I mean, just, like, if you can be this resilient and this durable, and you have Lucho, who's, like, you know, the fastest man in the world. Um, yeah. And like, I haven't have a history of, and I've never burned out because I haven't been like this, yeah. like I've been doing this since I was 12, right. hundred miles a week, whatever. It's like, yeah. Hey, I'm still pretty fresh athletic age. So it's awesome. just kind of, it's an exciting sort of like, all right, let's see where this goes. And I love the day to day, the day to day is yeah. where it's at. It's just it's like, I love the process of it. Just kind of like my morning routines, the coffee, um, <laughs> everything involved is just kind of, yeah, it's, I'm liking it. It's awesome. How about you, Nate? What do you what, what's what's got you stoked right now? I mean, currently, I'm just stoked for tomorrow. <laughs> That's all I'm looking forward to. No, I just I mean, I am excited. I love. I feel like the more community that I'm around. What I love about running is the community of it. I think that's what started me uh, in running. That's also what I love about coffee as well. Is just mm. the community. Everybody has different backgrounds, different experiences. They all have different beliefs, but we come together for this one thing and this one common goal. And that's what's so powerful about humanity and so powerful about running is when you go to these races and you're around people that are so different than you, but you're all there together to do one thing together. And it's so exciting. I'm super excited for Boston. Um, I think it's great just to see all these Americans coming up, you know, just, you know, since the eighties, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, I think it was like 1985 since the last woman, you know, won Boston, something like that. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I was super stoked to see Meb win in 2014 and, 
And I think when I see other people's successes, I love celebrating other people's successes. I love to see other people thrive. And then that excites me to, to even push harder as well and, and to go towards my own goals. Uh, so like Frank was saying, I, I think it's so fun that, you know, especially with math and, you know, you, I think obviously Greg went through this a little bit, but running in clubs a lot, like you get to the point where you're like, Oh, uh, like I don't even want to run with them. Cause I'm going to run way harder than I should. <laughs> I'm looking at my watch. I'm like, no, nah, I should slow down, but I don't want to cause I'm competitive. So, <laughs> you know, so I stopped running for a long time with people ran yeah. by myself forever. So I'm excited just for the community of people to uh, get more fit, but also more healthy as well. I'm super passionate about health. And because I've just seen myself change so much in that with just feeling good. Uh, I just, I love when people uh, sign up for a race or sign up for, Hey, I'm going to go do this hike and just celebrating with other people. So yeah, I mean, I'm just, I can't wait just for what's ahead. I, each year I go into the year, you know, I think Tawny will always ask me like, Hey, like, what are you running this year? What's going on? You know? And I even went into this year with nothing planned. <laughs> you know, I obviously have Ragnar cause I just love it. I told her it feels like a family. Obviously mm -hmm. that's why we're on here. Uh, but you know, that was the only thing I had. And the next thing I know, you know, just that being also something Tawny taught me was just being fit for life, you know, and just, even if there's let races come to you, because I think when I first got into running, I was always just going right after things. I have signed up for this, sign up for that. And now I'm like, okay, let things come to me. So even when Greg came to me and was like, Hey, do you want to run a marathon? I was like, Oh, maybe, you know, and then I got really excited about it. And I'm like, let's do this together. Let's, you know, just even though, you know, we're not running together every day, it's that community and having those same goals in mind that excites me. I don't know if that's a, that's a long roundabout. No, that's answer. awesome. That's just, you also beautifully yeah. said, Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, well, it is awesome. Like having our group exchange over the Facebook messenger because I feel like if I have a good run or a bad run, I'll like, but like pose it to you guys. I'm like, Oh, should I be worried? Or is this like, where, where am I at? Cause like you guys know so much about the sport and like, I feel like I my, my, my knowledge is like pretty limited and like pretty narrow. So like you guys are, have been a really good influence uh, and like sort of support group. Uh, yeah. We all learn from each other. So it's good. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Ryan? What are you, what are you excited about right now? What's got you uh, jazzed? Well, well, first of all, I'd like to point out we need to get Samantha on here because she can kick all of our asses. That's true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I invited her. She's in Arizona yeah. right now. She was invited. I know. Those, those pictures are amazing. Yeah. Gets me excited for St. George. I'm going down to the St. George Iron, Half Ironman to watch some friends race in mm. a couple weeks. So. Uh, nice. I... Kind of like Nathan, I'm excited for just the community, but mine's a little different. This year's uh, got a crazy lofty goal. Uh, the, the, the goal does like the two goals are kind of opposing and they don't really make sense together, but what the hell, can we go for it? And the, the two communities are pretty awesome. The, so the way I'm gonna try to do, the, I think you guys know, I'm gonna try to qualify for the 70.3 World Championships this year and then the Masters, U.S. National Championships in weightlifting this year and next, along with that. And those things are totally related. <laughs> not, not, not in any way. <laughs> but it's kind of cool because both communities, like they, they both think I'm crazy for doing the other thing, but mm -hmm. respect it wholly and completely. So it's pretty neat to <clears throat> go to lifting class and get made fun of for running, you know, oh, what'd you run, 13 miles before you got here? And yeah. But then they respect it. And then conversely, the runners are like, oh, weightlifting, that's stupid. But, <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody respects the just being fit in whatever it is you're good at. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about being me mediocre in a couple things instead of really good at one thing. <laughs> well, it's also, I mean, like they can laugh at you, but like if you're running friends, especially if the running friends or the endurance friends like give you a uh, guff about lifting, you can point out like, uh, you know, like the longevity studies showing like the more muscle mass you have, like the greater your longevity. Like there was some number in my recent blood work uh, called uh, creatinine. And mm -hmm. I asked Chris Kelly what it was. Cause mine was like, okay, but it wasn't great. He's like, well, like this is the only thing I would say because I can prove. And I said, well, how do you, is there like a supplement that we take? What do you do? He's like, no, just get more muscle mass, like build yeah. more strength. And I'm like, oh, great done 
Um, <laughs> like if you're like jacked, you're just gonna live forever. So like I always try to look at like the running side of it. Like okay, it would be cool down the road to get to the point where like I have running on like autopilot and like training's going well. And like six months out of the year is like marathon training. And then six months out of the year would be like just like developing strength and doing kettlebell stuff and like doing things that like maybe wouldn't be as, you know, like, like long hikes, like Whitney or something like that. So having that balance down the, the road would be really cool. I think um, and, you're, yeah. you're, and you're living it, you're doing it all the time. And also the lifts that yeah. you're, are really functional. Like you're overhead and you're really like working on all these like huge, like engines and drivers of the body. So it's, it's pretty incredible. You should um, maybe we'll in the, uh, the, the description of this video will uh do you have any like youtube links of your lifting accomplishments or are there uh, uh, <laughs> I know your instagram well, has them i have some instagram of my uh my recent my state record lifts but uh let's I'll, include see that then. I'll, I'll include your instagram if, if it's not private um no uh okay. maybe it is i don't remember well we, we, we can include it and if you get any requests, you can consider them on a case yeah. case basis. Yeah. <laughs> figure something out. Yeah. I don't know. It's, to me, it's kind of exciting because it doesn't make any sense and it's going to be really hard to figure out how to time everything every week, but right. it's kind of, that's what makes it exciting. Yeah. Figuring it all out. Yeah. Setting weird yeah. goals and like working with it. Yep. Um, well, we should do this like every month. This is really cool. And especially I think as we're all like, we have our races and events coming up over the next few months. Um, and obviously we keep our, our sure. Facebook chat going you know almost continuously throughout the day but uh yeah let's try to maybe aim for like a monthly check-in with yeah. uh we can maybe get like lee on board or because he has western states in june uh yep. and Sam's back we can have her she can even come to my apartment to do it since she's like literally like right there um normally uh that'd be really cool to keep keep the uh the ragnar brain yeah. trend, uh actively because this is i feel like you know initially i was like oh this would be really fun to have everyone on and we'll just like talk for a while and you know mess around but like uh it's it's amazing how like through running and you know these other goals that we have you know sport whatever like it really makes you you almost can't be a dedicated runner or like athlete and not like have considered your life in some existential lens in some way that kind of forces you to like consider things more deeply so it's, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to see everyone uh like across the country and you know on the same wavelength though it's pretty great for sure all right, guys. Well, um, happy Sunday. What are you all having for dinner? <laughs> Don't know yet. <laughs> Don't know yet. Yeah. I, I, it's always like a last minute scramble, like, oh, no, there's no food here. <laughs> yeah. Figure something well, out. well, I have soup potato. I, I make those in the morning first thing. That's like my like, yeah. guarantee. I'm like, got to have soup totally. potato around. Yeah. Absolutely. What are you, you going to have for dinner, Nate? I haven't decided yet, but I do know I have sweet potatoes at home. Yeah. I have some avocados. I'll figure something out. Nice. But, How yeah. about you, Frank? Um, I'm already, I've already eaten. Oh, but, uh, it's like I'm ready to go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's 20 for Frank right now. Yeah, <laughs> no, not that bad. Um, yeah, just had some leftovers. I wasn't crazy hungry today. Today was a day, rest day. But um, nice. Yeah, just All scrounging right. some leftovers tomorrow. I got to figure out what I'm making tomorrow. It's always the daily struggle, like how to get food. If there was a pill, like I and the, that, like gave us like nutrient density and like calories, I would take yeah. the pill. Like two out of three meals a day would just be a pill. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, I love cooking though, but it's like once training like ramps up and you're tired, it's like that's the last thing you want to do. And you need mm -hmm. so much food. You need so much food. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll yep. do the kettlebells. Like just like, you know, I have my my favorite one right now. I'm doing my uh, shoulder press stuff and windmills with a 45 pounder or 50 pounder. And then the swings with 63 pounds and like just doing that like a handful of times a day, I feel like like adds more to the calorie load already. Yeah. Walking Louie for a few hours adds calorie load. I'm like, Oh, how many calories do I need to eat? <laughs> I don't have time for this. I, I like Ryan. You're right. You've inspired me though with your smoothie idea. That, that, that seems like a really smart way to get some calories in there. Just like, yeah. Makes it again. easy. Yeah. And what you can, what I'll, so I'll, I'll do some food prep after this. Uh, but I just, I chop up a bunch of bananas and a bunch of fruit and I throw them in the freezer in little, in individual bags. That way in the morning, I just right. open up a bag and toss it in and good to go. That's really smart. Okay. Much easier that way. Yeah. Um, do you put a whole banana in your smoothie or are you, I guess you, you're you right. You're not thinking like, I'm already like, oh, a whole banana. Uh, I do, I do yeah. like one or two, I do, probably two. I usually All do right, about good. two bananas. 
the lesson here so far today for me, the big takeaway is like amongst many, many things is like eat more carbs, Greg, eat more carbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Eat something. Well guys, this, this is awesome. And Nate, we got to figure so, out some, uh, some local Southern California runs for our training. But, uh, for sure. And we'll have some, we'll have some choices to make in the next like probably like month or so about uh, the Santa Barbara half. Yeah. Race. yeah we'll figure that out. Yeah. So before we go, who's going to win tomorrow? Oh, <sighs> And I don't know who I want because I saw Jordan look like pretty good and she said a couple cool things and so I was super stoked for her. Shalane is like, this is my last race. This is the one that made me want to run. So yeah. I'm stoked for her. Desi's like always super cool. So yeah. chill. consistent. Yep. I just want like Molly and Desi and Jordan and Shalane to run across the finish line. Big tie, <laughs> just all <Yeah>. of them. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be great. Oh, man. Yeah. I feel like with Shalane, like, I mean, I love Shalane. Actually, I have her cookbook right here just because I wanted to, like, buy it and support her. Yeah, um, I got it, too. Yeah, it's great. Um, but I feel like, like, she's so cool and, like, she's such like, an amazing runner. and I, I find her so appealing on so many levels. She is a little, at times, like, robotic. You know, like she's yeah. like so focused in that way. She's almost like how like Derek Jeter was or like Tim Duncan, like just like mm. not automatons, but like they're so focused. They're very like not like, whereas like Desi is like so chill and she's like, yeah, I'm into scotch. I like coffee a lot. She has her own coffee yeah. now, her and Ben True, which is awesome. Um, I got to try that stuff out. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, like, I feel like she's a really cool person uh jordan's just like a little sprite so yeah i, I honestly i'd be happy with like any of the top four yeah. women tomorrow when i'd be delighted like if shalane could win that'd be pretty incredible but like she got in new york which is pretty sweet um desi you get the impression like i feel like watching her run like she came in second in 2011 and i don't know she's like doesn't seem like she's so chill at times i'm like do you even care if you win like obviously yeah. she does yeah. <laughs> but like, whereas like Shalane really like she was like you know like the fuck yeah thing at the end of the yeah. New York marathon and like she really like is all about this thing like I don't think she has hobbies I think she's like I run I train like she <laughs> is like I think the ideal of like like Ivan Drago you know style like I am focused I'm gonna like excel at my sport and like that's it yeah um, and Jordan's so young that like I if she doesn't win you know this one or she has to run more marathons i feel like even with molly they're like oh yeah molly's probably gonna win tomorrow and it's like this is her second marathon like i doubt she's gonna win the boston marathon on her second attempt yeah it seems like kind of they interview with jordan though no Just... at the press conference or where yeah i was at the press conference there's an interview with her and it's, they asked her about her training and whether the marathon is a a long distance for her and she said yeah last year it kind of was but this year she's been doing a marathon as her long days wow like the long the long run is 25 to 28 every Jeez. week that's and every she, week yeah once a week so 25 to 28 and she's just super prepared but wow she's super chill and then i saw her say something about it's not about the placement or the time it's it's more about the beauty of the performance yeah which is really, really cool awesome. to me so, I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah. I want them to all win. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I, I can't wait. How, how are you going to watch it? I feel like there's like a cbsboston.com. I saw yeah. it. Like they're going to live stream it, I think. Yeah, they should um, be live streaming. Or like the NBC app, maybe. I, I have to look at it tonight and kind of figure out how I'm going to watch it. Because it's uh, women's race is 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. Men's race is 10. Um, is Eastern Standard. So Eastern. So, yeah. So, like 6.30 yeah. and 7 a.m. So, I'm going to get on the bike tomorrow morning and just watch it for as long as I can before I have to go to work. I think I could right. probably, I mean, I definitely could finish. Well, actually, I guess I could, 10, 7. Yeah, actually, I could probably watch both races play out. Mm -hmm. I don't leave work till like 9.30 usually. So, yeah. Anyway, so now, now I'm just rambling about like right. my lipstick. I know, I could talk forever about it. I just was curious. <laughs> 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 like, all right, <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Oh, all right, guys. Man. So good. Boston hat, Boston shirt. We're all, we're all ready. All right. Um, so yeah, we'll wait for uh, for next month. We'll check back in. We'll see how we're all how we're all doing. Yeah, awesome. sure. All right, guys, this is yeah. awesome. Have a uh, a great yeah. evening, everybody. Yeah, you all do the same. All yeah. right, good night, guys. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.